you could join me today on this beautiful day today. It's another painting that I'm going to do. It's going to be a winter scene. I'm going to use uh, three basic colors and all the colors and any information are going to come up across the screen. And um, we're going to use Prussian blue, phalo blue, alizarin crimson, maybe a touch of midnight black. And um, what I did was I started and I did the whole painting with a thin coat of liquid white. This is going to help blend the colors right on the canvas so you don't have to do it on your palette. On your, just like the tra traditional oil paintings. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out since I already put the liquid liquid white on first, I'm going to start out with a little bit of Prussian blue and phthalo blue. Just tap it very lightly. Because it's easier to put more on than to take it off. With crisscross strokes, we're going to start out in the corners. Barely putting it in. Maybe a little bit more phthalo blue. Darken it just a little bit more. As you blend it in, as you paint it, it's automatically going to get lighter towards the horizon. Like in nature. A little bit more flavor. Crisscross strokes and just leave some open areas. It's going to leave some light in there. Maybe we're going to put clouds in. It puts depth. It gives depth in your painting. And it's like I said, it's got to get lighter towards the horizon. What we're going to do, I'm going to clean the brush real quick. What I want to do before I get too much further ahead, I'm going to use just a tap. A very slight flavor of alizarin crimson. We're going to put that in the sky. This is going to be a winter scene. We're going to put maybe some water down here. Maybe a pond. A little bit at a time. A little bit. A little bit flavor in here. A little bit at a time. Like I said, you can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. Just a little bit more flavor. We're going to have a couple mountains in this scene here, in this oil painting. If you have any problems with any colors, what you do is you just keep brushing, brushing across, and you can diffuse it that way. Okay, clean the brush again real quick. I'm using uh, odorless paint thinner. I'm going to go back to the Phalo blue, a uh, little bit of Prussian blue. We'll do some more sky here. Make it dark in the corners. Clean the brush off. And blend it in. This is going to be a little bit of an easier painting because we're only using a few different colors here. Excuse my back. Now we're going to take this blender brush and we're going to blend 
some of the sky in. There are different shapes, textures in the sky. See how it diffuses the more I get into the liquid white. Sometimes if you want to get the lighter colors, you start out down here and you pick that up and you can pull it right up into your darker colors and it will diffuse it. Don't really much care what's going on down here because we're going to put snow in and some landscape trees. Okay, this is what you're looking for. We'll go right into fan brush. I'm going to load a fan brush up with some titanium white. and liquid white and we're going to make some clouds so you're going to load your brush up hope you can see it on both sides we'll come up here and you can put clouds wherever you want this is your painting it's your world I think I'm going to have my clouds start right here turn the brush over get more paint on it use circular motions when you're doing clouds. Circular motions and what you're looking for is this white area up here. You want to keep that white area. Because if you notice in the clouds that's the brightest part. And we're just going to put that in there like that. Going to go in and grab the Two inch brush and at the base of the clouds we're just going to blend it in. Don't want to touch the top part yet. Maybe put some more because you want these maybe in, maybe in your world you want it to be a fluffy cloud. More more depth. Two hairs and some air just flip up, lift up very lightly. And if you see in the clouds, they got that almost cottony, misty look to it. Take the fan brush again, load it up with your titanium white, liquid white, and you want to make it layers. So I'm going to put one back here further and it's going to give some shadow there and a little bit of depth. And you'll see that as we do it. Right like that. You can have it go however you'd like. However you'd like it. Maybe the cloud goes right across there. Take that two inch brush again, barely blend it in. What I see is, I want to put more here. Just like that. Barely blend it. Two hairs and some air. Barely lift up. Go across. You can make as many as you want. This painting here, I always like cleaning the brushes off. This painting here, we're going to have a distant mountain. We're going to have two sets of mountains in here. So the first one's going to be further back. We're mixing uh, Prussian blue, phthalo blue, midnight black, 
and we're going to flavor this just a little bit with some titanium white because we want that distant mountain to be just a little bit a little bit lighter than the one further up I'm going to take a little cut of paint on it a little roll right across your palette knife Let's say we're going to have the distant one. We're going to off center. And we're going to put this one wherever you think. Maybe right here. It's perfect. Just where you want it. Okay, after that, we're going to take a 2 inch brush, take your 2 inch brush and just blend it down. This is going to give you your depth in your mountains and also how big you want them because you can blend it down and make them as big as you want or as small as you want. And if you notice what I'm taking off is all the excess. We're leaving the, the peaks, the tops, because that's the most important part. A little roll of paint on here. Maybe this one here has got some right here. that brush again, blend it, get your different angles. If you notice it gets lighter, lighter the further down it gets. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab some Cut off a roll of titanium white. A little roll of paint because this is going to be your highlight right across there. Let's say our light source is coming from this angle here. We're just going to tap it. A little more roll of paint. Maybe right here. Just let it roll off. Do you get what you're looking for in here? You can just keep running off the snow. Leave the brakes in here because that's what makes it. That's what gives it character. Maybe in this mountain here, maybe back here some of the light is hitting. Barely. Take the same color and we'll add a little bit of phthalo blue for your shadow. Cut across, a little roll of paint again. Find out where your shadow is. Maybe right here. Maybe right here. Here. Wherever you think it might be. You can also come back depending on how much time you want to spend. And you can highlight and do whatever you'd like. What I just did was I took this small end right here. The palette knife is cut off that sharp peak right there. You can use that part to get the smaller areas. Okay, after you do that, 
you're going to tap it and defuse it down here at the bottom. Kind of blend it in. So you can't really tell because it's a distant mountain. You want to make it misty. Now, another roll of paint. Um, we're going to put another mountain. Maybe a bigger mountain right here. And I've said this before. That this type of painting. You don't make mistakes. You have happy accidents. Maybe it has a peak right here. Maybe that goes down. Scrape all the excess off because we don't care much about what's going on down here. We just want that, those peaks sharp. Maybe this one goes down here. Big mountain. Take your too much brush and do like you did the, the back mountain. Gotta blend it in. Diffuse it. Look at your angles. Maybe this comes this way and goes this way. This one here. See as it blended in with the color below that, automatically gave you that misty look. Once you've done that, I'm going to go back into titanium white and start our highlights. Cut a little roll of paint. And we know our light source is coming from this angle. You just get to tap it. And let it roll off. Put as much as you want on, as much snow. Maybe this has got some more snow the further down. You can leave the different breaks in there like that because that gives it texture. And maybe right here right wherever you want it to be. Add some more. Get your little roll of paint. And you can have that come right in here. back here got some light hitting 
Maybe this sticks out a little bit. So you're going to see more of the snow. Okay. Take the phthalo blue. Shade color. You don't want to mix it too much. You don't want to get that marbly look. And here you can put in some shadow. Here and there. And A little bit. A little bit everywhere. Maybe down here. The shadow is a little bit lighter. Mix us more paint up. Right here. Just let it break. You pull some of that white down from your snow, that's okay. Kind of blends it all in. There, you can take it. You can kind of make these mountains. However you want them to look. Maybe this one's got some going back here a little bit more. Once you've got that, you take your two inch brush and tap it. You fuse it. don't really want to know where the mountain ends. You want it to be misty, misted. Kind of blends it. Kind of blends it together. Gives it that nice, foggy, misty look. Once you got that done, take your palette, your uh, fan brush, and what we're going to do is we're going to clean it off and go into that same mountain color we used for the back mountain. That purple. What we're going to do is put distant trees in. Load the fan brush up. And what we're going to do is we're going to tap down on the corners, just tapping. So let's say we'll start right here, towards the middle, and just tap. Get a little bit of paint thinner, if you have problems with, with it sticking. And we'll just tap it. Here we'll start. With some higher higher trees. You see that? That's kind of what we're looking for. Try to make them smaller. Fade it away when you get closer towards the mountain. Up here we can make it higher. Make some high ones here. 
make some high ones over here. Get them at the different angles. Different angles and the different heights. And just keep tapping until you kind of get it all blended in. And once we do this here, we're going to get the different heights in. Just keep tapping till you get as many as you want in there. Tapping straight down. Because all the trees are at different heights. In nature, they're not all the same. I hope you can see this. Just exactly what I'm doing. And here we can even go up higher. On this side too. Just keep tapping at different heights. Different angles. Just keep tapping. Okay, once you've done that, you're going to take your brush that we used to blend and to make the mist. And we're going to make it misty. Go up. Slightly go up. And that's going to make the peaks, the tops of the trees. Give them that sharp, sharpness look that they have. And if you notice, all this here will blend in. And we'll give you another layer. And that's what's important about it. Each one you want to blend, and you want to make the layers that will give depth. It will give you that depth in your painting, each, each progression. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this same brush here. We're going to load it up because we're going to put some land in now. We're going to load it up with that dark color that we use for the mountains. Because all we want to do is fill it in, and we want to use some dark dark color because then we're going to cover it with the white snow so let's say let's say we got here we got some land just tap it maybe it comes down maybe it comes down goes up maybe over here it's right here starts right there. But leave that space in between. In between your your mist. Because that gives you your depth. I'm going to fill this in some more. And maybe we're going to have this be a distant distant piece of land. Maybe we'll put some evergreen trees back there. Some pine trees. Depending on how big you want the land, it's how big you make that part back there. What we have is a little piece of, uh, we have a hair on there. Normally you can just take it off by using another, another brush. And see that, where that light was? We just blended that in. Okay, now that you've done that, determine on where you want your land part to be. We're going to take the fan brush, the dark color again. Like I said, we're not using too many, too many different colors here on this painting. Fill it up with a darker color. We're going to come in and make some, make some trees. Start out and just tap down. 
Then from the corners, you're going to start and you're going to tap in and go across. Tap it. You get your tree look all the way down. Add a little bit of paint thinner, more dark color. Maybe we'll put a smaller one right here. We'll put a small one right, right here. And when you're doing these, you want to make sure that when you're tapping down, that you tap down hard enough as you're going down your tree. Maybe we're going to have, let's say a big one right here. A big tree right here. Just tap harder as you go down. You'll tap more and more. You just keep tapping until you get it the right texture because you got branches. You got the branches that that come out that are just just different sizes in nature. So you just have to just kind of go with it and once you start oil painting you'll see that you'll look at things in a different way. You'll look at things in a way that's just that maybe you didn't look at before. That you never really noticed. That you really didn't notice about maybe so much of the trees or or what what was going on with them as far as the nature, the nature part of it. I'm going to load up some more dark color and we're going to put a tree right here. A bigger one. up some more dark color almost out fresh and blue phthalo blue crimson load up the colors and right here we're going to put a big tree in maybe we'll put a couple in Maybe we'll put a couple trees in here. So I'll have to tap, tap it, tap harder as you go down. And look at how all that just takes. How you just, just comes right off. And then that mist behind it, you can see through the trees like in nature. You want to leave those gaps in there like that. That looks really good. I like the way that worked. It just came right off, right off the canvas. Maybe this one here. I'm going to do something a little different and make this one higher. Just tap down to give you a basic outline, a basic look. And as you go down, you turn your brush, your brush over. And you just keep tapping. A lot of this will blend right in. More color. Darker. Darker it gets. Closer to the ground. Maybe this one here comes out like that. Okay. Now we're going to do something a little different using the same brush. That is really good thing about it, I'm going to have a tree coming over the top. It's going to close all this in. So what you do is you take this brush here and just tap on where you want it to start. Like right there. Kind of like the same tapping you did with the evergreen trees, but you're going to come down. This is going to be a tree that's hanging over. That's okay. We covered up some of the Maybe some of our clouds, but it's going to come through. It's going to shine through. This one, maybe 
and it's darker darker closer towards the inner part of the tree like in nature that's something that you'll learn too in nature you look at clouds different trees grass and just how the shading is on them we'll cover up some of the tree some of the the mountain in the back you can put this anywhere what we're going to do is we're going to cover all this in because we're going to have another piece of land out here so we'll wait we'll cover all that in for now just like that now what we're going to do is figure out where we want our land to be because we're going to put a little pond in here because it's icy it's going to have a little bit of an icy pond and maybe maybe our water line is right here you get that little bit of a reflection from the trees and stuff but we'll work on that because what we'll do is we'll take a fan brush we'll take off some of the paint on it because we don't want it real dark in the paint and we'll tap down then what we'll do is we'll make the impressions of the trees we did the trees we just did we're going to put that backwards in here tapping it from the top and what's going to happen is we're going to blend it in so you're not really going to be able to see much of it as you do when you're doing the actual painting themselves you want to get the try, try to get about the same texture the same color that you got from the original trees and you're just going to tap kind of kind of an upside down motion once you've done that barely go across going to diffuse it barely go across it and all that's going to blend in further as we as we do more of the painting as we get into more of the the pond okay after we do that we're going to take a two inch brush and we're going to load it up with a lot of titanium white titanium white and some liquid white and we're going to start putting in the snow on that one area we're going to load it up make almost like a sharp edge on it and you're going to find out where you want your snow to be maybe right there just tap put more on there tap it just keep tapping get some more lighter lighter colors more white maybe over here there's some snow there's some snow that's that's built up just the way you want it just keep tapping don't tap it all in you'll have some darker areas where the snow is and maybe where it accumulated what you're going to do is come right up to the line right up to that line maybe a little bit more liquid white tap it so you can get a nice blend look nice look to it a 
now what we'll do is we'll take this color and we'll use the brush and we'll pull down so just a little bit to get the effect of the snow and the part of the landscaping because when I come back I'm gonna come back with I'm gonna come back with a blender brush bring that down kind of diffuses it see what it did brought that snow and everything down in there barely go across now you're going to take some of the dark color the mountain mixture and everything you're going to come along and maybe make just tap it maybe make some lines here on where you want to highlight you want to highlight where you your land is part of your landscape in there take your blender brush again the one we just used slightly pull down on that just a little bit maybe go across pull down kind of gives it the depth some extra darkness back in back in the area where if you look at frozen ponds and, and just water in general usually you don't have like a water line it's usually all kinds of different things going on that you might not really you might not really catch right away we'll pull this down maybe a little bit of color here darker darker here because it's in the shadows We'll pull some more dark in here. With the palette knife. Then what we'll do is we'll bring that down into the water. With the blender brush. So there's going to be more shadows and more towards this part. And you can take the edge of this and kind of make your trees with that with that corner you just wanted to get it the misty look the idea the idea of the trees after you've done this we're going to put another piece of land a little peak coming out Maybe our peak is, we'll put a piece of land coming out right here. Load up some darker color. A little bit of liquid white. A little bit of paint thinner. Midnight black. Kind of the mountain colors. Mix it all up. We just want a darker color. dark color like that and maybe this comes oh maybe it's right here think about the lay of the land and this doesn't really much matter what goes on here because as you know we're going to be putting in We're going to be putting in the lighter colors, which is going to accent it and highlight it. Maybe our pond comes right, right around here. We're going to add some more dark color, and we're going to come out here. Let's say we're going to have something right here, a big hill coming right down, right down into who knows where. 
like I said, we can fill this in however you want. All the different textures that you get from tapping will make it even better. Right now we're just filling it in. It doesn't really much matter. What we can do now, since we got to this point, we'll take the dark colors and we'll finish with our tree. Bringing it down into the land. And we'll blend all that in and you'll see how that just will take off on you. And look good. We're going to tap this in too because it's going to be darker right, right along there. It was a little bit too much light shining through there. Through there for me. Okay, now we're going to take the blender brush and find out where we want our land to be, where to stop, where to start. Just kind of tap. Kind of tap it. Kind of go across. Missed it. Get that misty look. See the, the shadows? Kind of gives the water a little bit of a flavor too. And that's okay. Like I said in the beginning, when you don't make mistakes, you have happy accidents. What we can do now is we'll highlight Right around here. Just tap it. Kind of gives you a kind of gives you a watery outline. Here, there, there, and here. And you'll see in nature that it's not perfect. There's no trees. And there's no landscaping and there's no water lines that are perfect. Since we got the palette knife out, and since we got this over here, and we put the liquid white on first, we can use a palette knife and scrape and make twigs and branches and stuff. Like we, we can do it right here. And that's all going to show up. I don't know if you can see that. But you can make little grassy areas. You can put your, your tree in. All your branches that come out. Just by scraping and using this palette knife. Over here we can put some, maybe some grassy areas. And sometimes if you shake a little bit, it's okay because nature's not straight. It's not straight up and down. Now we're going to take the light colors again and we're going to put our snow in. Tap it both sides. Maybe here. Maybe here. Put it wherever you think. Bring it right up to that line. It's not like doing landscaping. Because you want that snow, want that snow to be seen right at the very top of it. But you can still do the lay of the land and make your different angles with the snow. All you do is to keep tapping. Just like that. And as you can tell, when you put different layers on, one layer might be lighter, and the more you tap it, then it gets darker, and you automatically will have your lay of the land almost. See, when you first put it on there, it's more of a highlight. Turn your brush over, maybe this part goes right down here. You don't have to tap it all in. In some areas, as you know, 
and snow. What kind of breaks? And maybe this is where maybe this is where some of the snow was melted. And that's just what you're looking for. Maybe up here by the trees it's uh, there's more more snow. You know how it builds up by the trees and then it falls off. And it's all real thick and deep by the trees in nature. A little bit more white. I keep loading up the white. Just because the canvas just keeps taking it off and whatever effect you're looking for, how much snow, how much snow you want. And always think of the lay of the land. That's the most important thing. Just keep tapping. The snow's a little different than anything else. It's just the way it lays. Okay, we're getting to this point here. We're almost getting a completed painting. But there's a couple more things that I want to do. And I think, I think I'm going to put another big tree in. Another big evergreen. And a little bit more um, paint thinner. Because let's say, we're going to maybe have some depth here, so we're going to put a tree right here, almost off the canvas. Higher. Right up there. All the way down. And leave some space in between. They all don't have to have branches all the way down. Because if you notice in nature, you'll see that the branches, there's some bare spots. And here, we're just going to, this is just going to fill in all the way down until we get down to here because this we want to bring this we'll cover up that white keep loading my fan brush up and I'll put the tree right down here it's wherever you want it to be it's exactly where it should be we'll fill that in Okay, now I'm going to clean this brush off. That's what's good about this painting here. You don't have to do a lot of brush cleaning because you're not using a lot of different colors. But what I'd like to do now is I'm going to get some liquid white, titanium white, and we can highlight some of the trees maybe just tapping down like maybe there was some snow snow that ended up laying on the trees turn your brush over and tap it and you'll get more more out of your brush maybe here there maybe further down like that. Perfect. Maybe on some of these evergreen trees we're going to do the same thing. We can tap it here and there. There and here. Just to give it some flavor. Just to give it a little bit of, or maybe the snow accumulated. And maybe on this tree here, we can put some on the front tree that we just did. The back ones you're not going to see so much. Just because of the distance, you're not going to see really the snow. And it's our world. And, you know, maybe the snow in our world 
and it gets melted off. It all depends on what you want to do. I hope you, when you're doing this at home or wherever you're at, you can take all the time you want and you can really get into a lot of the detail part of it because you can keep going and going on this. We'll blend in some of that snow there. And we'll put a palette knife, a little cut of white, and we'll tap in a water line here. Kind of breaks it up. You want to keep all your, much of your lines straight across, as much as you can. That keeps it from your, your water and your everything falling off your canvas or off your painting, and we don't want that. Okay, we're going to take a liner brush, a script liner brush, fill it up with, uh, I put it paint thinner, and it's time to sign your painting. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I went at a okay speed for you, where it wasn't too fast, and you could see all the colors coming across the screen. I like signing mine down here in the corner. But you can sign it wherever you'd like. Some people use their last name, and that's what I do. And some people, some people use their initials. And you can use whatever you'd like. Well, I hope you enjoyed this painting today. And I'm gonna keep doing paintings and and putting them on YouTube. I'm going to be doing some paintings with uh, palm trees, Florida. Uh, this is one of my winter scenes. I've done, uh, I'll be doing one with a glacier. And uh, I hope you come back and join me. And uh, my website is www.johnlacroixhobbies.com. And uh, I hope to see you again. And happy painting.